Okay, let's uh, load data from an Excel file into a SQL Server table, and then let's make the package so that it will load all Excel files in that folder and subfolders into that same SQL Server table. Okay, so to begin with, we need to um, create a package. So we'll get a new package. Um, We'll rename it. Oops, didn't mean to delete it. Right, rename it. It's right next to it. And let's just say um, Excel to table. And okay. So now we need, of course, we need to start with the data flow task. And we'll go into that data flow task. And here, since our since we're beginning with Excel, let's use a source assistant and let's say Excel. Let's say new uh, file path. Okay, this is the path where I've got two files loading. We're just going to load the first one uh, at first, and then we'll have the package so it'll get everything in this folder. So we need the next one to prove that that works. So we're going to start with that one, the first one. Open that. Um, and now it's thinking, because it's trying to decide which one of these to use. OK. Uh, column headings, that's good. Um, OK. Uh, now uh, we want to choose the name of the sheet. Picked up the name of the sheet. OK. Oh, I, I guess I could show you that we have the table here. It's just a simple customer table with an ID name, country, race, and um, as you can see it's empty right now. And we have, here's the folder, so here's one of the files. This one has three rows, the other file has two rows. Um, okay, so here's our Excel source, and uh, we don't have any red X, so it looks like it's Happy. Oh, we should look at the columns. Yes, we want all of them. Okay, so that looks good. Um, since Excel data types and SQL Server data types are always a little different, we're going to need to do a data conversion whether we like it or not. And so let's go ahead and bring this in. Um, we're going to need to convert them all. Okay, let's stretch this out so that we can see all the different types, because some of them are pretty long. OK, the ID is, um, we can come in here, and we can see the the ID is an int, and the name is Varkar, country is Varkar, and the race ID is an int. So if we want to go from so they're saying double precision float instead of int and int is dti4 i believe so this needs to be dti4 so that's the integer so we're converting those to a sql server integer type now these are unicode and we don't want unicode we want um now here's a handy table. This is why I knew that was was I4 because there's a, I'll I'll leave a link to this table in the show notes. Um, let's see, we want varcar, so we want um, DTS string with the correct length. So we don't want this DT. We want String, string, where's the string? String, string with the correct link. The first one is 100, and the next one, string, no, not stream, string, is 50. OK, I, I believe that's correct. Um, OK, so that's good. Now we want our table. So we want um, 
destination assistant new uh, we want to connect to our box and the so that's the box and the server instance box slash server instance what is authentication um, this is the ted test one database so that's good we have our connection um, we want to put that in there and we want to go to the customers table and we want to make sure things are mapped right and of course it's not mapped right okay for the customer ID we want copy of because that's the one we converted copy of copy of copy of okay so now we have no warning flags so let's just uh, let's make sure this is the starting project so that we don't run a different project and let's hit start and we got all green check boxes let's see if we have our data yes we have the first uh, data the first sheets data so let's go ahead and get rid of that so that we can do it again but this next time we're going to try and load the whole thing okay so now let's go back to um, design view okay and go back to control flow and what we need to do is we need to add a looping control which is the let's see for each loop container yep that's what we want and let's zoom in a bit here so we want that and we want to put that inside of that and we can tell it's inside of that because when we drag it it comes with it so you can do that believe it or not you can just drag things inside the loop container um, now for the loop container we need this is just the name collection now here's where we this is the starting folder and it looks like there's no way to make this dynamic it doesn't need to be a dynamic for this situation though because we're gonna load from the same folder uh, we're gonna loop through that folder but it's the same folder but if you do want this to be dynamic like a parameter or something um, it's in the expressions you have to come into the expressions and you have to pick um, directory and then you have to um, select your parameter or your variable so they kind of hid that from you uh, usually there's like a button or a checkbox or something that says load from variable and then you can load it from a variable but here they decided to hide it in an expression okay so uh, we're going to be pulling only xls files so we can do that we do want the fully qualified name in this case we don't have any other folders but we could do that if we if we had folders um, now we have to map and what this is doing is this is where we want to put those file names that this loop container is going to get. Um, I have not created a variable, so let's go ahead and create one here. It's nice it has a little way to create a variable here. Uh, let's just call it D for variable and then something like full file path. It is a user. It is a string. Um, it doesn't really need to have an initial value. Um, does not need to be read only okay so we and this here you can't change this this is just saying that they're gonna fill using the index starting of zero zero based uh, array here that it's gonna fill your your variable so that's all we need to do for that now we have to get this to take that so what do, what do we do well we need to make it so that the connection manager, that Excel connection manager, it's going to, instead of using, oh, one thing we didn't do though, we forgot to put our path to where we are, and it's a pretty deep dive here. Um, I need to go to main, my documents, programming, knowledge base, SQL, 
Business intelligence. IS. Packages. Load example. Okay, so that's where they are. Okay, and in the connection manager properties, right now it's it's going it's just loading that one, and we don't want we don't want it to just load that one. We want it to load. So we want to say file path. We want to get that from that variable we created. So our full file path variable is now where the Excel Connection Manager is going to pull its path from. And now we're getting a warning sign. Why are we getting a warning sign? Because it, it can't process that. It's got an error, an OADB error occurred because it, it can't process that. So what we have to do is we have to tell it not to process that. We have to click on this and say delay execution uh, validation true. So once so now it won't validate until it actually gets one of those file names. Um, and that's we should also be able to do that here. I was thinking, yeah, delay file action. So you do that. You need to delay the uh, validation for both the Excel Connection Manager and the Dataflow task itself. And I believe that's all there is to it. The day this is still happy. This is this flag is still going to be there. It, it's, it's maybe it would turn off if I do. Ooh, okay. No, it's it it just does not like that at all. But we're delaying validation, so I think it should still work. Yeah, see, it, it worked. It delayed the validation, and it works now. And if we hit close. Now it's happy. Now it's gotten rid of that flag. But uh, we can go into uh, SQL Server. We can run a query, and we can see all five rows, the three from the first file and the two from the second file. We see all the data is there. So um, that's that's all there is to it. Um, you could like add another task in here to move those files to an archive or something, and that would just be a, a simple um, you know, move files task. Uh, file system task to move the files. And that's about it. Any questions, leave them below. Thanks.